If 2023 was the year of the jack inhibitor in IBD, then 2024 is arguably the year of the anti-IL-12-23 therapy. In this class of drugs, we have a lot of movement happening. There are four molecules of interest. We have the anti-P40 molecule, ustekinumab, that blocks interleukin-12 and interleukin-23. And then we have three anti-P19 molecules, more specifically blocking IL-23. We have rizinkizumab, mirakizumab, and gazelkimab. What's happening this year is one, ustekinumab is going biosimilar. And so that means from approximately July this year, in large swathes of the world, we will have biosimilar ustekinumab at probably, although we await the price point, a cost equivalent to anti-TNF therapy. At the same time, we are using more rizinkizumab in Crohn's disease, and following the sequence data, we're seeing this being used more ahead of ustekinumab, particularly on anti-TNF failing patients. We're also seeing mirakizumab, or UMVA, which has now been launched for ulcerative colitis, we have yet to dose our first patient in Scotland because the um, launch has only just come through. But nonetheless, we're excited to see how this is going to work in ulcerative colitis. And at DDW this year, we're going to see the phase three data for gazelkimab in both ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. And so here we're going to have an interesting series of questions as to whether or not you're best to be the biosimilar and cheapest in class, even if you're not the most targeted and effective of therapies, we'll come to that, or whether or not you're best to be first in class with the P19s, as rizinkizumab is in Crohn's disease and mirakizumab is in UC, or whether or not you're gonna be best in class. And we will await the full data sets from all the molecules to be able to make at least some interpretation of that. And so where do I see things going this year? Well, we are very excited about biosimilar ustekinumab. We spend a lot of money on ustekinumab originator at the moment. And so in a cash strapped NHS, those cost savings for existing patients will be substantial. We're already excited about rizinkizumab in Crohn's disease and are using that in patients who are failing TNF and other drugs um, in Crohn's disease, second, third, or fourth line. And we're looking forward to using mirakizumab in ulcerative colitis. But cost really is critical here. And one of the key dilemmas I think we're going to have, which I alluded to in the video the other day, is what about early on in therapy for Crohn's disease? We have the profile data that shows us now that infliximab plus azathioprine is very effective when used very early in Crohn's disease. How does adalimumab monotherapy and ustekinumab monotherapy, presuming they're both as biosimilars, maybe both cheaper than infliximab, how does that stack up against the infliximab plus azathioprine combo? And then, a key insight, I think, from both sequence and from the Vivid1 data set is that ustekinumab is probably almost, if not as effective, as P19s in the bio-naive situation. Now, that's a controversial statement. It's what you might expect to see from Vivid1. This was not tested in sequence where all the patients were bio-experienced. And so maybe ustekinumab first line and then rizinkizumab, which is what we've got currently in Crohn's disease after TNF failure. So quite technical today and probably best explained with the aid of a graphic that I'll aim to um, share um, shortly to help demonstrate where I think we are with sequencing of therapies, particularly in this P40, P19 world targeting IL-12-23, where we see four molecules. We're going to see a wide spread of cost 
from biosimilar estacanumab to the full price P19s and where we're going to be um, dissecting all available data to see where the more expensive drug is worthwhile and when. And so we can then look to prioritize costs and drugs for those people who are going to benefit the most. This is, I think, increasingly important to us um, in most healthcare systems in the world where price is a very important factor and we have to be cost um, aware as physicians um, as we look after our patients so that we can stick to our core goal of improving outcomes for as many IBD patients as we can um, and obviously helping do the best we possibly can for the individual person in front of us with Crohn's disease or osteoporosis colitis. So that's where we are, that's where the community's at. There's going to be lots of more data to come in this space this year. So 2024, the year of the anti-IL-1223. Um, there's other things happening. We've got the S1P story breaking as well. I'll come back to that in another video. It's Friday, April the 19th. Thanks for joining me. This is episode five of Atomic IBD Uncut. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. Most of these videos are only going direct to YouTube. So if you're subscribed, you'll get notified um, when they are online. Thank you very much. Enjoy your weekend. More tomorrow.